Over the past couple of years, I've uploaded several hundred videos, mostly of the Baltimore area. And one of the most common comments or questions I've been getting have been, where is everybody? Baltimore is a big city, so it's sort of unusual to be able to drive for blocks and blocks and not run into anybody. So today I want to go over this phenomenon specific to Baltimore. I think everybody's pretty familiar with the idea of, of Rust Belt cities and, you know, deindustrialization, jobs going overseas and industry leaving and all of those factors. But today I want to take a Baltimore specific look at this and highlight a few of the neighborhoods that have been virtually wiped off the map and also talk about a program called Project Core, which has been responsible for close to over 5,000 homes being demolished at this point. Now, a lot of the proponents of this program say that it's what Baltimore needs to turn the corner. A lot of these homes are just rotting away and there's no sense in leaving them there. Well, detractors would say that it's the worst kind of gentrification where entire neighborhoods are wiped off the map instead of a more subtle gentrification where neighborhoods are gradually improved while retaining their original charm. So today I'm gonna to look at four different neighborhoods um, and notorious streets that don't exist anymore. The first is Pearlman Place on the east side. The second is Tivoli Avenue on the east side. The third is basically the whole Park Heights neighborhood in the northwest. And the fourth is on the east side near Johns Hopkins around Chester Street. Right now we're looking at Pearlman Place over on the east side of Baltimore. Now this one, as you can see, this is street view around the year 2010. By this point, this neighborhood had been basically abandoned, although as you can see, there's still some people living here. This actually just jumped back to 2007, so about the same around that time. But then you jump forward to today or within the last few years, and it looks completely different. And now I, it raises the question that it looks like there's a urban garden of some sort there now. But it raises a question is, is what's there now better than what was there before? And I, I, when the housing stock gets as bad as Pearlman Place got, I think there's not too much dispute that there's not much saving a street like this when most of the houses are nothing more than a brick facade. But the other question is, how do you keep streets from getting like this in the first place? This is not something that happened overnight. It was years, probably decades of, of issues that could have been nipped in the bud long before it turned into something like this. Next, going on to Tivoli Avenue. Similar story, although Tivoli Avenue, up until about 2010, was had a little bit more going on in terms of people still living there. And it was known for being a, a rough uh, part of the east side, but it was still fairly vibrant in terms of people living there. But you see a lot of the same problems where you have the housing stock is deteriorating and high vacancy rates. So if we skip forward to 2019, as you can see, this neighborhood is completely gone. And this extends for a couple blocks in each direction. Next, moving on to Park Heights. This is a case where basically a whole neighborhood doesn't exist anymore. This is about 10 years ago. Now, if we fast forward to today, it's open fields and, and not much else. So that goes back to the same question as before. Is it really worth it? to do all this demolition, potentially displacing people. This just jumped back to sometime before 2022, it looks like, because yeah, that's all not there. There is a 
bigger project that was just started. So hopefully this can be the beginning of, of a turnaround for the Park Heights neighborhood. But it, it really does, and it, it also makes you wonder what do the former residents and people who grew up there and spent their childhood in Park Heights, you know, what does that, what does that do for them to see it completely wiped off the face of the, wiped off the map? So, and then finally, the last one we're gonna look at, this is arguably the most successful of these demolition and rebuild projects, but it's, it's also been the most controversial because this is Chester Street near Johns Hopkins University on the east side. And as you can see, when we skip ahead to 2020, it looks completely different. There's new buildings, there's big open green space. There's a number of large projects related to the hospital and housing for hospital staff. But you still have the situation where you had a neighborhood here with its own character and its own people who lived here and people who grew up here. And, and again, this one, by this point in time, had pretty high vacancy rates, but some of that could be attributed to planning by the Johns Hopkins University as they were buying all these houses, letting them deteriorate as their plans were long-term plans. So, you know, it didn't really bother them to let these houses sit and rot for years or even decades as they worked on other parts of their project. So moving right along, we're going to look at what the demolition's always been a thing. I mean, as long as you have deteriorating and vacant abandoned housing, you're always going to have something. But in 2016, the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland made a big push to expedi expedite the uh, demolition in the city. As you can see, if you zoom all the way back to Baltimore, it, there's been over 5,000 units demolished. They're scheduled for 300 more. As you can see, it's, it's all over the city, primarily on the uh, east and west sides and then we looked at park heights and as you can see if you zoom in there's i mean dozens if not hundreds of houses and looks like close to 300 houses in the neighborhood of park heights that just don't exist anymore so that's really all i got for now i mean one other thing a lot of this a lot of people will have a lot of things to say about about all this and the pros and cons of gentrification and the pros and cons of you know large-scale demolition versus small-scale renovation and trying to trying to bring a neighborhood back rather than build a new neighborhood but one thing to keep in mind is the city of baltimore in the early 1950s it was estimated reached a peak of right around 1 million people living in the city and as you can see it's been all downhill ever since then. At this point, there's only half the residents that there used to be. So on some level, large scale demolition is, is expected because there just aren't the number of people here to fill all the houses that used to be required. And a lot of these houses were relatively inexpensively made brick houses that, you know, I mean, if they're 70 years old now, they've they're exceeded their expected lifespan. So, you know, it's, it's just an interesting subject and it's interesting to see the city change. I mean, I definitely would like to see neighborhoods maintained as, as best they can be, but understand also that there are, is a need at times to de demolish when you know, if, if it's just an empty neighborhood of falling down houses, there's not much you're going to be able to do with that. So anyways, that's that's all I got for now. So let me know what your thoughts are on this whole subject. And if, if you have any other topics you want me to go into, preferably Baltimore specific, just because that's what I know better than Philadelphia or New York or any of these other places. So let me know. If you like this content, subscribe and 
like it and share it and I will see you later.